The Michigan Wolverines are 10 and 0 for the first time since 2006. That season, Michigan entered Columbus 11 and 0, lost to the Buckeyes who went on to be the runner-ups losing to Florida in the National Championship game, and then they lost the Rose Bowl to USC. Let's hope that this Michigan Wolverine squad can finish the regular season undefeated for the first time since 1997 and 12-0 for the first time ever in Michigan football history, hopefully winning the Big Ten championship game and possibly winning the national championship game. I'm saying this, of course, as a Michigan fan, but it all starts with every given Saturday winning football games. Michigan won against the Nebraska Cornhuskers 34-3 leading 17-3 at the half, and then shutting out Nebraska 17-0 in the second half. I think Michigan has outscored their opponents 117-3 over the past five games in second halves. Michigan's second half adjustments are just absolutely unreal. Michigan bullied Nebraska this whole game, running up and down the field, On them, Blake Corum had 28 carries for 162 rushing yards and one rushing touchdown. Just absolutely fantastic player. Ronnie Bell had a receiving touchdown and would have had another receiving touchdown if he didn't fumble it. Luckily, Andrew Anthony recovered that one for a touchdown. J.J. McCarthy had only eight completed passes, but for 129 yards and two touchdowns, Michigan ran pretty simple playbook, ran the football against an inferior team in Nebraska who's now 3-7. and They are the only team since 2017 to have not had a bowl appearance because Kansas just clinched bowl eligibility. So, tale of two different programs. Since 2017, Michigan has been one of the more successful programs in the nation. Top five? No but still one of the more successful ones in the nation, having a college football playoff appearance, a New Year's Six Bowl game appearance, and all but one winning season. Nebraska hasn't had any winning seasons since 2017, so a tale of two different programs. Mark Whipple in this game, perhaps the most notable and surprising thing that happened in this game was Nebraska OC Mark Whipple being hit in the leg. He is a trooper. He recovered. He looked to be healthy, which we are all thankful for. We don't like it when a player or a coach of Michigan, Ohio State, Nebraska, of any team gets hurt. We want maximum entertainment. We want the big hits, the solid tackles, the fun shootout games, but we do not want injuries. Michigan's passing game, though. I want to get really into this game outside of just the rhythm of what happened. And really the rhythm of this game is that Michigan did its usual. They weren't the fastest starting team, but at the end of the day, they just slowly wore down their opponent and broke them. They went in a 14-0 run. Timmy Bleakroad scored Nebraska's only points, three, with a 37-yard field goal. And then Michigan outscored Nebraska 20-0 the rest of the game. They had 412 yards to Nebraska's 146, 27 first downs to Nebraska's 8, and they had 35 minutes and 32 seconds of T.O.P. to Nebraska's 24 minutes and 28 seconds. There was some snow in this game. Weather conditions were not perfect. Nonetheless, Michigan's passing game is really worrying me as a fan. Now, what I will say is I don't know if Michigan has to have a good to great passing game to win the national title, or at least I don't think they'll need it to win the Big Ten. National title is a completely different question. I don't think they need anything above an above average pass game to win the Big Ten championship game. They won the Big Ten last year with a worse defense, in my opinion, and with a worse offense. This team is better than last year's team, in my opinion, and they won the Big Ten. And Ohio State this year, despite being better, 
than last year's OSU team, I think that this Michigan team with the style of football they play and with November weather favoring the Wolverines and Michigan still matching up better with Ohio State regardless of weather, which Ohio State actually overcame in their win against Indiana, Michigan can win the Big Ten with their current passing game. What's concerning to me is if this team goes on to the playoff with J.J. McCarthy, you know, for two games in a row, he's completed 50% or less of his passes. He hasn't thrown a pick in any of those games, and he's thrown multiple touchdowns in the, in the Rutgers and Nebraska game, but he was 8 of 17 for 129 yards and two TDs. He has a QBR that's top 15 in the country, and he has like a 158 passer rating. So he's still on track for being statistically one of the most efficient Michigan quarterbacks, but he can do better, and the scheme can do better for him. He is a five-star. He has a talented wide receiver core, and yet the passing game, especially the deep passing game, doesn't connect. Now, what I will say before I move on to the next point, or really, no, this ties in with the next point. The Wolverine style of football continues to work. This system is far from broken. And the intermediate pass game is better than last year, in my opinion. The short and intermediate game is more fundamentally sound and is more consistent than last year. Now, the deep ball, I think Cade McNamara actually had a better deep ball last year than J.J. McCarthy does this year. But still, Michigan doesn't have to pass it as much this year because their offensive line is better, their running back room is better, Better. I mean, you have C.J. Stokes, Donovan Edwards, Blake Corum, all really great running backs. Blake Corum is solidified himself with Chase Brown and Bijan Robinson struggling this, you know, this past weekend. He solidified himself as the best running back in college football, and he has a great offensive line to work with. And the defense is number one in scoring and number one in rush yards allowed. So. What Jim Harbaugh is doing with this style of football continues. It just continues to work. Chewing clock, running for anywhere between four to six yards per carry. Last year, it was really Michigan running anywhere from three to four yards per carry. So Michigan can run more effectively. They're more explosive in the run game. They're even better at getting pancakes, at bullying opposing defensive and offensive lines. I, as a Wolverine, love it. Now, do I wish that, you know, we could combine, that we could be like Georgia, where we had a better, a better pass game? Do I, do I wish that? Of course. It'd be awesome to see J.J. McCarthy nail some deep balls, and we'd probably average anywhere from 7 to 10 more points per game. But this Michigan team isn't perfect, and if Michigan were to have that deep ball threat and a better pass game, this team might be one of the better teams of the 21st century. Like, this team is good. The passing game is the one missing piece, and they might not even need it to win in what has been a chaos year of college football. Nebraska, want to talk about them for a minute or so. They're in obvious need of a foundational rebuild. Obvious need. They're 3-7. and seven. They're the only team since 2017 to not have a bowl appearance. Mike Riley destroyed them, and Scott Frost came, he saw, he did nothing, and then he was, frankly, fired. So, Nebraska needs a big-time head coach, they need a guy who can build a program, who can raid the portal, a guy who can get attention, a guy who from, like recru of recruits who can get attention but who can also scheme. So as I talked about with Corn Crazed on live, like Lane Kiffin, Deion Sanders would be good examples. Dave Aranda isn't as attention. I mean, he doesn't, he isn't as magnetic as those two, but he's very cerebral. He's a genius. He's done things in the Big Ten before. Lance Leipold or Chris Kleiman, they've done more with less. They've rebuilt programs. Nebraska needs a builder. They need a builder now, whether that builder has charisma or recruits at a high level, or develops at a high level, or both, get in someone who can rebuild from the foundation up, and I think Nebraska will be back to having some success. Here are some ramifications of this game. 
The passing game is above average at best. However, and this is a question that I want you guys to answer in the comment section. Does Michigan really need it if they want to go 15-0? and Like, do they really need a great or elite passing game? If they have an elite run game, if they have an elite rush defense and a great pass defense, do they need anything above a, an average to good pass game? Do they? Honestly, there have been teams that have won national titles that have not been perfect at everything, that have not been great at everything. Ohio State won it all in 2014 with Cardale Jones. And yes, I mean, he could throw the ball. He had wide receivers, but that team wasn't perfect. They suffered a loss earlier in the year, and it's not like they had the number one defense or the number one offense. They just played their style of ball, and it worked. Talk about 2017 Alabama, a team that did not have the best offense in the nation and had struggles at quarterback. They made the switch, they still had some struggles, and they won it all. So does Michigan really need a passing game that is great or elite to pair with everything else that's great about their team to win it all or win the Big Ten championship game? Comment your thoughts on that question down below. Michigan's offensive line and running back rooms make for an, an unstoppable rushing attack. No one can shut them down. You might tackle them for a loss here and there. You might occasionally force Michigan into a passing situation, but history shows, consistency shows, that Michigan will be able to run, 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 run on you. They will. They will be able to run down your throat. And something that I'll talk about in tonight's live stream is actually the 412 rushing yards against Penn State, that... That puzzles my mind because Penn State and other teams too that Michigan has ran against are actually all teams who are relatively decent or good or great at stopping the run. And Michigan has, they've just absolutely stopped and trucked through every team on the ground. This defense is peaking every single week, especially at shutting down the run. On both sides of the ball, Michigan has an elite run game. They run the ball down your throat, and when you as the opposing team hand the ball off, they stuff you, they tackle you for a loss, they just they shut you down. They force you to be one-dimensional on defense and on offense. And I apologize, I'm on campus and I am recording this video in the car. So if you hear any background noise, it's my bad. Nebraska was able to scramble effectively with Chubba Purdy. And I'm going to tie this in with Michigan here. Uh, Michigan on defense, Ohio State fans, if you want to beat Michigan, if Ryan Day wants to beat Michigan, he should test Michigan's defense by rushing C.J. Stroud. Like forcing Michigan to decide to attack C.J. Stroud or Henderson or Williams if healthy or even Dallin Hayden. Like having Stroud as an option in the rushing attack or at least encouraging him to scramble effectively could cause, some, could cause Michigan's defense some problems. Nebraska was able to do that with Chubba Purdy. I think they they averaged over five yards per carry with Chubba Purdy running the ball, and Purdy had five carries for 39 yards. He was the team's leading rusher, most of those coming on improvised scrambles. So Michigan's defense, listen, it's an elite defense, and the rushing offense is elite. But this team, and in my opinion, like every team in college football this year, and really every college football team ever. I mean, even 2001 Miami had a close game against Boston College. They do have weaknesses. They have areas on their team. I mean, every team has an area that they are worst at compared to every other thing or every other scheme that they execute. Like, they have that one play call that they are not good at executing compared to all other play calls, if you understand what I'm saying. And Michigan's in on defense, in my opinion, is defending mobile quarterbacks. And I think Chubba Purdy exposed this. I think Peyton Thorne, even at times, whether it's more likely last year, but even times this year, has shown that. So looking ahead, 
Speaking to the Ohio State fans who are subscribed to me, C.J. Stroud, he should be used in option attacks against Michigan's defense, and Michigan needs to learn how to contain scrambling quarterbacks, and I think Jesse Minner, with the amazing adjustments he makes, will be able to do so. The Cornhuskers desperately need an identity on all sides of the ball. This is another point that I have. They desperately need it. Their defense and offense are both lifeless. And Mickey Joseph should be kept on the Nebraska staff. What he's done with Trey Palmer and Marcus Washington is fantastic. But I don't think he's fit as a head coach. I think that, you know, you you get Dave Aranda, Lance Leipold, Chris Kleeman. You get Deion Sanders, Lane Kiffin. Heck, even Mark Stoops. Get them as the head coach. Keep Mickey Joseph on the staff as a wide receivers coach, associate head coach, and co-offensive coordinator. And, I mean, he'll he'll recruit. He'll develop. I just don't think he's ready quite yet to be a head coach. And that's to talk to you Nebraska fans. And I think I'm going to make a video within the next week talking about my ideal candidates for the Nebraska head coaching head coach position. And that's all I have to say for this video. If you liked it, please make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, click the notification bell, and comment your thoughts on this video down below. Can Michigan win it all with the current passing attack they have? That's the question I have for you viewers. Comment your answer to that down below. And if you're listening to Spotify, make sure to follow the channel there. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.